Hey guys, when you play a role of solution architect, you need to do the proper resource planning. And under the resource planning, you need to select the correct tools and the resources. Now, selections of correct tools and the resources depends on multiple factors. These factors could be price, support and the performance. In today's sessions, we are going to cover the main difference between the AWS, EBS, EFS and S3 storage. So, you as a solution architect, this tutorial is going to help you to select the best storage for your project. Hey guys, my name is Avnas and you are watching the learning destination. If you haven't yet subscribed my channel, then please subscribe my channel and press the bell icon as well. So now firstly, we will understand the full form of the storage. So when I say EBS, basically EBS stands for Elastic Block Storage. Now EFS, EFS stands for Elastic File System. And finally, the S3, we call the S3 bucket, right? So that stands for Simple Storage Service. So now in the first sections, I'm going to cover the AWS EBS. And as I mentioned in my previous slide, EBS stands for Elastic Block Storage. Now from definitions point of view, let's see that what it says. AWS EBS provides block level of storage volume and it is used with the EC2 instances. It behave like raw unformatted block devices. It can easily mount as a device on your instances. You can create file system on top of these volumes. Now here I would like to give you one example. If you remember when you create the EC2 instance inside the AWS cloud, if you uh, focus on that basically when the operating system is getting a store on the volume that volume type is EBS right and on top of that we create the file system like we create the partitions root opt home etc right now you might be wondering when I refer the term what is block storage right so definitions is given on the screen uh, on the screen and let me explain for you a bit block storage is splits cuts data into blocks and stores them as separate pieces. Each block of data has its own unique identifier, which allows a storage system to place the smaller piece of data wherever is most suitable. What does it mean, guys? Basically, the block storage refers to the block. So when you store the data inside that, the data is chops into the blocks and it is getting stored in different, different blocks, okay? So in different, different blocks, every but the data in every block has its own unique number. And that's why when you try to access the data, the CPU catch the data with the following unique identifier number. And that is the meaning of block level storage. So data is getting stored under the block. Now there is type of EBS volume. So there are various types and you, you you can see, you can easily assume that when you create the EC2 instances and the moment when it gives you facility to add the volume, there they clearly ask whether you want the gender purpose SSD, provision IOP SSD, throughput optimized SDD or cold SDD. So based on your requirement, you can uh, exactly select the volume types what exactly you need. So this is overall about the AWS EVS. Now we will jump on EFS. So before I jump on EFS volume, uh, let me show you one of the diagrams. So basically you can see here and I try to explain it through the diagram. So this is your elastic block storage and when you select it, it gives you facility to, to choose the type of the volume and here you can select the general purpose, provision, IOPS, SDT based and SDT based there is two kind of throughput optimized and cold. So based on your requirement, you can select the correct EBS volume. After that, you simply attach to the EC2 instances and you are good to go with your applications. It means that you are perfectly fine to run your applications based on your selected block storage. Now let's understand the EFS. And EFS stands for Elastic File System. If you see that the name itself is quite explanatory. Guys, previously and especially the guys who belongs to Linux background, they know that that EFS is actually the NFS storage. And if you work on NFS storage, you can easily get the concept of EFS. Okay, so EFS is nothing, no more confusion. It is kind of NFS storage. Let's see the definitions. AWS Elastic File System is basically a NFS storage. 
it organizes data in logical file hierarchy and data is stored in the path based system the same thing you can do with the nfs storage and especially i want to highlight these things those belongs to linux background they definitely have somewhere in past they have done the nfs storage it means that they have configured the nfs storage it can be accessible by multiple compute instances including amazon ec2 amazon ecs and aws lambda so it it is accessible by the multiple aws resources you can even mount the efs with the vpc through the network file system version that is kind of protocol and the version in mention 4.1 and 4.1 okay now efs storage classes so there is classes as well inside the efs file system uh, that is called elastic file system and the classification is standard storage classes it offer multi multi zone resilience at the highest level of durability and the availability and there is one zone storage classes so one zone it offers customers the choice of additional saving by choosing to save their data in a single availability zone now let's go through yes. hey guys so now we have one of the slide which is appearing on the screen and now you can see that it is the example where the efs storage has been mounted on multiple availability zones so this is you can see that this is one of the availability zone us west 2a and this is the second us west 2b and this is the third availability zone us west 2c so it means that you can mount the efs on multiple uh, zones however in case of evs you can only mount in one region you cannot mount it on multiple zones so we are going to look into that aws s3 so as i mentioned earlier the s3 stand for simple storage service is a object storage service that offers you a scalability data availability security and performance in a nutshell you can understand it as a a storage that gives you accessibility to store over internet it means that you can store and you can access it from anywhere now term what is the object storage a data storage architecture that manages data as a object called object storage we are also getting classifications under the s3 storage types one is simple you can create the aws s3 bucket and second one is aws s3 glacier which is the cheapest one it means that you need uh, let's suppose that you have some bulk amount of data and you are storing into the storing into the s3 bucket okay so there there is some retention period you want to keep your data until 3 or 4 months or let's say 6 month right and after 6 month still you require data but since the cost is high in s3 you want to move it somewhere so so in such scenarios you can simply move the data in s3 glaciers right and on top of them you can put the expiry date as well so after uh when it reaches to its expired date right it automatically gets deleted and you won't be charged okay guys so now from the previous slides we have quite good understanding over the aws storage but when the time comes where we need to select any one of them which will be our choices guys let me tell you it totally depends on the nature of your projects and the requirement each volume has its own value and the significance If I talk about the EVS, then AWS EVS is faster than AWS S3, having high IOPS and lower latency. It is cheaper than EFS. Then you can use it for DB backups, or you can use it for all lower latency application. And you should not forget that it it stores data into the blocks, into the chops. Okay, it chops the data and stores into the blocks. If I talk about the EFS, you can mostly use it for the large quantity of data, and mostly you can consider it as for large analytics workload. So wherever there is a workload of large analytics, you can consider the EFS. If you have such kind of applications where you need the high IOPS and lower latency, uh, like uh, DB backups, you can consider the EVS storage. now let's suppose that you need such kind of a storage where you, uh, you want to access it from anywhere so in such cases you can use the s3 which is the cheaper as well right but in terms of evs you can only access this volume from particular 
region. You can access the EFS from multiple zones and you can access the S3 storage from anywhere over the internet. So on basis of these qualification, basis of these value, you can select the best storage for your projects. Hey guys, that's all for the day and I believe that you really enjoyed this session. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach me anytime. Just write me in the comment sections and I will answer it there. One more request guys, despite of good contents, I am really struggling with the subscriber. So please help me by sharing my channel within your friends and the colleague and subscribe it as much as possible. So I will see you in my next tutorial. Till the time you have a very lovely evening. Stay healthy, stay safe.